Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Patterns, Level 1, Observational Patterns. When you're looking for patterns, you should always start by defining the system. So in what system are you observing patterns? But there are so many types of patterns in science that it's really important you specify what type of a pattern. So in this video, we're just going to talk about observational patterns. So how can you use your senses to make sense of the world? What we're really looking for if you define patterns is regularity in the world. What, what is regular and what is not regular? So the object we'll use to represent patterns is a prism, and the reason it's a prism is if you, if you use it in different ways, you can see different things. It's also a five-sided prism, and that should remind you of your five senses, and that you should always, when you're looking for observational patterns, walk your, through, walk your way through all of those senses. By the time you're done watching this video, you should be able to recognize observational patterns in just common day objects, but also in the sky as you look at clouds or in the weather as it changes. But I'm gonna start by showing you my thinking as we look for patterns in this three gear machine. So the first thing you should do uh, with any kind of a system is you should define the system. So the system we're going to investigate is this three gear machine. And all we're gonna do when it comes to patterns is we're gonna look for observational patterns within the system. So you should play around with the system or observe it carefully before you'll start to see any patterns. And what I always start with is I start with vision. I start with my, what, what can I see and what patterns can I observe just using vision. And so I'm gonna write some of the things down below. So I noted right away, just observing that each of these gears have a different color, different sizes, and different number of teeth. So now let me write those patterns below those descriptors. So what I'm showing here is for the gray gear, it's a large in size and it has 14 teeth versus the blue, which is smaller in size and only has 10 teeth. Next thing I might do is just play with them. So the sense of touch is really important when we're looking for observational patterns. So this is definitely wood and these are made of kind of a plywood it looks like. So let me write that down as a material. So another pattern that I'm noticing is that they're all made up of wood or they're all made up of plywood. And then maybe for the last one, I think tasting this is not going to help me, but as I look at the last one, I'm noticing that the direction is important. So as I move the gray gear in one direction, I'm seeing different directions kind of as we go across. So let me represent that. So this would be another thing that I'm noticing, and that is that as I move the gray gear in this direction, so the, we could call that clockwise direction, I'm seeing that the orange gear moves in the opposite direction, and the blue gear is moving in the same direction. I could keep studying this and finding more patterns. Each time I identify a different pattern in these different objects, it tells me more about the system. So let me clear this out, and then I'm going to give you a different set of objects, and I want you to find some observational patterns. All right, I set up another system for you to investigate. I've got three seashells. So I've got this white, it looks like it's some kind of a snail. I've got a gray kind of a snail. And then I have this, uh, looks like a cockle. So it looks kind of like a clam. And so what I'd like you to do is pause the video. Um, if you want to see better videos of this, there's a Google slide deck below this video you could use. But what I want you to do is pause the video and then go through and record as many observational patterns as you can in these three seashells and then come back and we'll compare our thinking. Okay, the first thing I would do is write down the observational patterns that I can see just using vision. That's the first thing that I would do. Thank you. 
So the first thing I notice is that they have different colors, they have different shapes, and then a couple of them have openings. These ones have openings, and this one, it looks like it's missing half a shell, but doesn't have an opening. So let me write those descriptors down below. So what I've noticed is that, and I've lined them up on this side, we've got a brown, a white, and a gray shell. Um, the brown one has a fan shape and no opening, whereas the other two are spiral in shape and then have one opening. Next thing I would do is I would feel them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel this one and feel this one. I know it's hard for you to do that through the video. Um, and then I'm gonna write down what kind of a texture I feel. So as I feel them, the brown shell is gonna be really smooth. This one's smooth, but this one is really, really rough. And so I'm starting to see that even though these looked similar, there, we're starting to see some differences between these two. Next thing I might use is uh, the sense of sound. So hitting them to each other. So the pitch is important. So when I hit the shells together, I found that this one had a high pitch, a medium pitch, and this has a really low pitch. And so maybe that tells me something about the structure on the inside of the shell. So all we're doing when we're looking for observational patterns is just carefully looking at any kind of a system from a number of different angles. We're using our senses so we can better understand that system. Um, as you go out into nature, this is where you want to start. As you look at something like common day objects, what do they look like, but what do they feel like? Or as you move into nature, what do the clouds look like and how do they change? Observational patterns is always step one as we start to understand systems, and that's patterns. Observational patterns, level one, and I hope that was helpful.